Hello everyone, it's Liam Caddison here. It's time to get into the second episode of Season 8 for Supernatural. Um, so yeah, we started off really, really uh, intriguingly with uh, Season 8 because um, with the ending of Season 7 in mind, we had uh, Dean show up um, after um, seemingly uh, what will potentially be a season's worth of looking um into the past about what happened at Purgatory, where he, of course, in the last episode, in terms of the flashbacks, he met with Betty. But um, yeah, it, it seems to give the indication, especially with how reminiscent it is of Arrow for me, uh, that we are going to explore his time in Purgatory in terms of flashbacks and all of that. So um, yeah, I'll be very intrigued to see that danced across uh, the season. But um yeah, it was uh, pretty, pretty great uh, to pretty great and pretty, of course, uh, tense with uh, the reunion of Sam and uh, Dean, especially with Sam not looking for Dean whatsoever. And um, Kevin as well, uh, with the fact that uh, we, of course, followed up of what happened with uh, Kevin after he was uh, taken by Crowley at the end of season seven. So, yeah, but um, very intriguing stuff with the last episode to set things up for this season of Supernatural. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see what this episode can bring. With that said, it's episode two of season eight for Supernatural. Let's go. Is there another box? That's not normal. Anything else I can help you with today? Why, yes. Now that I think about it... Not concerning. I'd like to make a withdrawal. Oh, no. Hmm. Withdrawal her from life? Yeah. She's surrounded by demons. Can you really not understand why I want to make sure she's okay? I mean, that's it, though. You understand Kevin's concerns, really. Especially with Chan... Uh, yeah. Fine, Channing's go. neck just... Twisting in ways it shouldn't. Special delivery, biatch. <laughs> be I'm sorry. Hi, Mom. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. What have been doing all year? Watching television. <laughs> Did you really have to kill her? Damon would have warned Crowley where Kevin was if we didn't. It's been a rough... Crowley is the one who kidnapped you? Um, yeah. He needs me to right, translate isn't a stupid tablet. Kevin, you want to back us up here? Came all the way down here to pull her out of the fire. Now she wants to jump right back in. Oh my God, she's giving the tell look. Her what to do? <laughs> I like her attitude. I'm not gonna lie. It is a dangerous endeavor, but all right, coming with what? Like it's my first tattoo. <laughs> I like her attitude. She is fierce. She takes no shit. Oh, poor Kevin. She's handling it like a freaking champ. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> poor Dean. I'll show you. How about you just tell me? I don't want to take any chances. Hey. Oh my god, that is very intimidating. And then. Much First in May. Go on. Oh my god, is. Oh shit, how it's bleeding through, Finish really. Shit. Dean. It's a very scary side we're seeing from Dean with him being, uh, being in purgatory. Come on. Oi. But how it bled through, really. Oh, the Ferrari! Wyoming tax assessor's office could arrange that if he thought something untoward was happening here. I love her. I freaking love her. She. 
What's it going to be? The she tower? can take down Crowley on her trash own. Crap, you call a car. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I was liking you there, but you don't have to. You don't have to shit on the Ferrari, okay? You don't shit on the Ferrari. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, let's let's just not get crazy here. Supernaturally flicking the two of you against the wall just for the fun of it policy. Is that right? How'd you manage that? Well, I am the right hand of a god, after all. Plutus, specifically. Oh! Is that even a planet anymore? <laughs> That's Pluto. <laughs> it's a god of greed. And my liege has warded these premises. Huh. Well, no. Say it, and I will kill no. you, your children, and your grandchildren. No way, Sam. Okay. This is audacious, uh, even for you. Wait a second. They, these auctions, they... The first stickers on my Previa mean anything. <laughs> what do you mean, baby? Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Mignolia? Huh? How the hell are we supposed to know who's who? It's pretty simple, Dean. They're all monsters. Damn, what I, uh, did, hey, if, hey. What happened to Thor? Sometimes you have to break some spines. And who is this lovely young thing? Must be your sister. Hey! Woo! 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 Charming. I love her Silent so much. Apart from the Ferrari comment. Do list. Uh, 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 uh. Woo! I would love to happen. Anything more in our Mookie pals here may just throw you out, and that would be this vessel. On short notice, we don't usually come to things like this, but uh, you're chasing okay. the magic rock. We protect the word of God. Well, awesome job so far, uh, Alfie. Actually, my name is Samandriel. Let's just stick Samandriel. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about Castiel. That Castiel's heart was always in the right place. Are you one of them? I think too much heart was always Castiel's problem. Oh, ah, oh, that that's sad. He just had too much heart, and that that's Castiel. He's still alive, though. I'm not. Yeah. I'm perfectly sane, but then. 94% of psychotics think they're perfectly sane, so I guess we'd have to ask ourselves, what is sane? Oh, a good question. Why yeah, bail on Dean, especially dude? in purgatory. The way I hear oh. I need you. He needs you, bud. No. And if Leviathan want to take a shot at us, let him. He's we not leaving your side. Before, we could do it again. It's too mm. dangerous. Let me bottom line it for you. I'm not leaving here without you. Understand? Putting his foot down. He's staying by your side. He is not. Yeah, but he's gonna ditch, isn't he, at some point? Again. Three tons of dwarven gold? Ah, this lady? Wow. Yeah, I they're three, like, wait, what? Four. Ah, four gentlemen here. Four I don't think this is five, gonna cut five. it. Five to this lady. Do we have an advance on five Plan tons? Let's see. This is, you know what? It's Any so funny. Bits? We saw a Ferrari, now they're talking about Plan C. Plan D will come shortly. It's sounding an awful bit familiar for me in Formula One when it comes to the Ferrari strategy team. Okay. Plan D? Our next item up for bid, the Hammer of Thor, Mjolnir. And a finger bone from the Frost Giant. <gasps> the guy with the... Oh shit, that was a frost giant thing. Oh my. Uh, Are you um, shitting me, really? Uh, Vatican City. What the fuck? Alaska. Palin, and a bridge to nowhere. No thanks. <laughs> All right, the moon. <laughs> the moon? I'll show you the moon. Oh, so. <laughs> what the fuck? That's desperation if I've Mr. ever seen Crowley, it. You don't have a soul. Congrats, sweetheart. <laughs> he was like, worth a try. <laughs> Excuse me, miss? Sorry, my name's Sim Alfie. I'm an angel. Who works at Wiener Hut? Right, Alfie. No, this is, uh... It doesn't matter. Uh, what you didn't hear. 
Oh. Hello, boys. No. What the fuck? Oh no. Kept my warding spells. Your girl Friday. And all it cost me was an island in the South Pacific. I love a bargain. Ooh, Plutus. Ooh. Oh my God! No. Private islands. Sam's worthy. Sam is worthy. Okay, give it back. Give it back. No, no, don't give it back, Sam. Oh my god, we need. Oh my god. We. Look, look, look. There is something hot about Sam with Mignol, yeah? Oh shit. They have a habit of using people up and watching them die bloody. Okay, so you've made this more personal. Doodles. Hey! 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 No, 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 no! You don't get to use that! I want to talk to my mom. Hello. Sure. Yeah, it was a it was a uh, push too far. Like he had the dagger as well, so. Well. Dean, it was Crowley, Sam. Still no Kevin's mom at the end of the day. Knifed him. I mean, yeah, it would have sucked and I would have hated myself, but that's Holy one more nightmare, right? Holy shit. He thinks people I don't need anymore, they end up dead. Well, Crowley said, I need to Crowley's advice. Dean, that, that, that's not true, you know that. And yet, he was going to kill Kevin's. Um, oh. Okay, that's okay. So that's not ominous. That is not ominous in regards to Cass. I mean, obviously there has been that worry when it comes to Cass that he's a goner. Um, and then of course you have a little snippet there in regards to Cass just not having. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe he was just trying to escape the quicksand or something like that. I don't know. Ugh. I mean, it was a blast of an episode. Sam with Mignol, yeah. Just, 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 just perfect. Just perfect. Um, now, I was low-key thinking that guy was either Odin or, or Thor, uh, like, but then, of course, the five-eighths of a virgin thing, yeah. Still, he could do something twisted with Odin, I guess. So... Same with four, really. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, Kevin's mom was really great, but it's just a shame that she got really fucked up by Crowley. Um, so, yeah. And that dickhead, uh, yeah, had to just ruin things, you know, singeing the arm and... Um, allowing Crowley free reign, really, so... I felt like that was a really great episode. Like, I felt it was a lot better than the opener. And, you know, I did like how we set things up with uh, Season eight opener, but... I mean, this had a lot of things that really had me hooked. Um, so, yeah. And, you know, with Kevin's mother, um, she was a highlight throughout this episode. Uh, even in, I guess, the traumatic parts as well, because, um, you know, it was just very, very sad to see, really. Um, and it, 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 it's, it was a vast contrast to um, how how she was throughout the majority of the episode. Because, and and you know, you don't blame her really. She's just been uh, traumatized. She's she's just been possessed by the king of hell, and. Yeah, not just that though, but she's gonna have a right burn mark uh, for life, really, with what that prick did to her. So, 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, it. I mean, Kevin's mom was just absolutely incredible. Uh, I was not prepared for for the absolute carnage she would bring. Um, and you just loved her from the very get go. So, yeah. Um, I mean, she insisted she tag along uh, the ride, and, and she was not taking no for an answer. So, I just really loved her iconic energy there. Um, and not just that though, but that guy uh, in the pawn shop. Uh, she absolutely roasted his ass. She absolutely knocked out Crowley because, and, and then Crowley took it personally. Hence. You know, the possession. <laughs> um, so Kevin's mom was just absolutely incredible. She she had such a fierce energy about her. She just was absolutely um, fantastic, mesmerizing, absolutely wonderful. And yeah, it, it was just really incredible. But I just find it weird personally for me, just sidetracking from Kevin's mom, that... Before this, I watched a Charmed episode that had, you know, bargaining basically going on. And I guess souls uh, fit into the equation because, of course, Kevin's mom did offer her soul. Um, so, yeah. But it's it's just so, so weird because, yeah, it's like... And, and, and it's so funny because I had to use the, um, of course, obvious joke. If I had a nickel for every time, for, for the amount of times I've seen this today, I'd have two nickels. Um, but I had to... Um, I had to, I had to paraphrase it because you know bid, bidding two nickels at a uh, at a bidding event yeah not really the best move is it so unless it was something worthless so yeah um, and then of course Crowley mentioned that line as well uh, if I had a nickel so yeah just peer into my it, like he's just peering into my head so. Um, but, I mean, this episode was just a blast. It was just a wild ride. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you just felt so bad for Kevin's mom at the end, obviously. Um, so, but I think that's the first time as well we've seen Crowley in his smoke form as well, when he left uh, Kevin's mom's uh, body. So, you do feel so bad for her. You feel so bad for Kevin. And uh, not just the fact that, of course what, not even 24 hours, I guess? Uh, maybe just a little more than that. He lost Channing, and not just lost Channing, he saw her neck go in ways that it shouldn't. And now, not just is his mom traumatized from being possessed from uh, Crowley, um, but also, um, you know, Dean was going to kill her. And after being abandoned by Sam all year, and now Dean was on the verge of killing her, um, who, you know, didn't really have any kind of regret. It, it was a situation where it was like, yeah, it would suck, but what's one more nightmare, as he would say. It, it, it's, it just, it's just too much, which is understandable, even if Crowley is going to be wanting Kevin at a future point. He just can't be with Sam and Dean, and he took Crowley's words. Because there is a kind of harsh truth to what Crowley suggested to Kevin about hanging around with the Winchesters getting killed. So, and like I said, not even a little over 24 hours after losing Channing, and then um, Dean's intent on killing his mob. He's only young as well at the end of the day. And not just that, though, but like a year prior, he didn't even anticipate having a lot of weight on his shoulders with him being prophet of the Lord, etc. And now he's in this position. Sam's been dodging his calls. Dean has been, uh, it was on the verge of killing his mom. So, um, uh, yeah, I see he, he did get the, 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 the dagger out. Um, but I was thinking, there's no way. There is no way. And yet, there was way, right? Because, as Dean said, he was gonna... Yeah. And I feel like that is definitely a testament to how purgatory has really fucked him. Um, I mean, you can really, really see the aggression and how he's had to keep this fight really going. Um... 
So, yeah, you you saw the violent instincts in the interrogation room, and then obviously, yeah, what happened in purgatory, especially with potentially casts, which we'll get onto in a moment. Um, what happened there is just really, really. I'd say haunted him um, because it's not like he is completely inhumane, but there is a, I feel like there is a lot of, lot of hurt, a lot of agony that is channeling in Dean. And I feel like Cass may have been the um, straw that broke the camel's back. Um, especially since there seems to be a lot of guilt in regards to, you know, what happened to Cass, especially when he was, um, talking to Sam Adriel, um, and there was that, that, there was that moment of reflection, so, yeah, um, but Dean, yeah, I mean, Purgatory has, that's it though, Purgatory has fucked him up, um, so, yeah. And there does seem to be this belief that Cass hasn't made it out, but I don't believe it. I don't believe it one, uh, for one second, mainly because it's kind of a redo of what season seven was. Obviously, um, episode two of season seven, we had Cass die. Um, and they made this whole sad scenario about it and obviously season seven was a lot of hurt obviously with bobby as well in mind uh but Cass was um yeah um so yeah maybe Cass is still there when sam and benny left uh when dean should i say and uh benny uh left purgatory maybe he like yeah because when Dean and Benny left, uh, Cass wasn't with them, obviously, as we know. Um, and there seems to be this idea that Cass didn't make it whatsoever, but Cass will make it. Like I said, I don't think they're going to... Uh, I don't think they're going to rehash something. Um, well, I say that because um, they are going to kind of rehash it if, if my uh, predictions are correct, really, uh, about... Oh, Cass is dead. Oh, wait, no, he's actually alive. Um, but the thing is that you're supposed to believe with season seven, I feel, um, when the Leviathans tore him apart. You're supposed to believe that he's dead. And I feel like in this um, point in time, they're trying to they're trying to do this again and it's like yeah no way i'm not believing that i i i know your game right is so yeah um so i feel like he might still be stuck in purgatory um and maybe that flashback at the final scene was like probably the final moment before dean and benny left purgatory for earth they had to leave castiel behind and um Maybe we'll get Castiel back at some point. Who knows? So, but, yeah. I Obviously, Cass gave his testimony about why he ran, apparently, uh, from Dean. But we'll definitely get a bit more in regards to Castiel uh, and his time in Purgatory as the season goes on. But it seems like they are going to definitely, yeah. Uh, they are definitely going to follow through with what I felt was going to happen, which was, you know, flashbacks in regards to the majority of the season, which is uh, neat, which I don't mind whatsoever. So very reminiscent of the uh, DC CW days, like I said, with Arrow, um, uh, especially uh, in its first season, you know, Purgatory Lee and you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But it was just really um, great stuff, I felt, uh, this episode. Um, so, I loved the whole bidding sequence, like, especially when they were uh, bidding for the tablet itself. Obviously, it came at a very poignant moment when Ke Kevin's mom, um, you know, would sell her soul. And, you know, there is nothing stronger than a mother's love for her son, right? So, um... But I also got to say there is a cruel mirror in regards to, obviously, when Kevin's mom's arm um, got singed. Um, 
you know, she took the tattoo like the chat, like a champ. Where is Kevin? Yeah. Um, and then obviously her going through so much pain, not just with that, but obviously with Crowley uh, taking a hold of her. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, there was some great moments in that bidding sequence, like, you know, um, Crowley trying to bid the moon, which is kind of funny when you think about Doctor Who as well, when, you know, Mark was in that episode as well. And, you know, the whole moon played a sequence. And it's a shame we didn't get more of Mark in Doctor Who, because I felt like he would have fit really well. Um, but obviously with the whole silence, uh, we'll fall shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, the whole, like, not just that though, the whole soul situation, you don't have a soul. It was like, well, it was worth a shot. So Crowley trying to bullshit his way through the bidding thing was just great because this was reeking of desperation. So yeah. Um, and at the end, Kevin's mom won. So yeah um because that's it though um her her soul um you know she she's yeah worried about her son understandably so yeah but yeah um but i just also got to talk about the elephant in the room i feel like right um sam holding manure yeah uh, yeah now look I'm just saying he's four, okay? Reincarnated. He doesn't have to, like, um, you know, yeah, he, he he's not actually four, but he's reincarnated, right? So, it's the long hair, though. That's why. It's the long hair. He Now, obviously, especially if you've watched, um, you know, certain MCU uh, products, you'll know that those, like, those who are worthy, it doesn't have to be four, uh, can wield Mignol, yeah, but... It's the long hair, and it just fits right, right? So, <laughs> um, I was just wondering about that old guy, because I'm like, is he Odin or whatever? Because um, obviously he's not Loki, because, yeah. Uh, that title belonged to Gabriel, uh, obviously, but, yeah. Um... Yeah, it was just, it was just really great stuff. Here's the thing, though. Because he, like, the writers have put themselves in a bit of a hole because they they had Sam hold Mignolia, and that's an iconic moment. But they also realized how OP Sam would be with Mignolia, and that's why he had to abandon it. And yet, why did he have to abandon it? Because he, it's not like, because I don't think he took it with him in, in the Impala. And yet, that should have happened. Like, Sam, this is Mignolia. You're worthy. You could literally, like, I would literally pay to see you go town uh, on uh, to town on Crowley with Mignolia. Just throw it at him. So, like, I'm low-key mad because of the fact that that is a once uh, that is a one shot in terms of Sam holding Mignolia. Because of the fact that they're like, and Sam just disregarded Mignolia. Even though that the person who bid it for it is dead, because it's not like he could give it back here, that's yours. Because the creepy old guy um, got Mignolia, but Sam killed him. So it has no owner at the minute. It's okay, it'll just find its way to, what was it, Mexico, and then a Philip Coulson can, uh, uh, can, can stumble into it, right? So... That's it. I'm tying Supernatural with the MCU now. It's all connected. Um, I'm low-key pissed, though. He didn't collect me, though. Yeah, come on. Um, but, I mean, that shot is just iconic. It's just him holding me, though. Yeah, it's the long hair. It's just like, oh. You could just... And in that moment, you could just hear thousands, tens of thousands, maybe millions of fangirls screaming. Um, just dying because of the, of that shot, so, yeah. I'm sure Dean holding Mignolia would be great as well, but I I don't know, there's just something to Sam just holding Mignolia that, that is, yeah, that is just, yeah, hoy, hot, superb, so, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, man. But like I said, I had a blast with this episode. Um, even with Kevin's mom, um, like, even if her story ended tragically, I guess. Because I don't know if we'll see her again. I I'm assuming we might, but her story in this episode ending tragically, she was a delight for throughout this episode with how fierce she was. Only time I didn't agree with her was when she shot on the Ferrari, so... How dare you? How dare you? But I also found it funny that, you know, Dean and Sam, they were all coming up with plans in terms of the tablet. We'll go to plan B, we'll go to plan C, we'll go to plan D. My F1 side of me was just screaming because we had a Ferrari and now we're talking about plan B, C and D. It's just like the Ferrari pit strategists all over again. Don't... Don't, don't get me started. Um... <laughs> No, but this was a really, really great um, episode. Um, fantastic stuff. Really enjoyed it. So, yeah. Uh, but I'm intrigued to see more of Purgatory um, now that... Because I'm assuming they're going in order and all of that. Um, so, the events of what happened in the flashbacks, barring the final shot, took place after the flashbacks in um, episode one. So... That's my that's my thoughts about it, but yeah, like I said, it will be very intriguing to follow more for that story, but yeah, um, great stuff this episode. So I will see you guys next time. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. You can check my videos on the right if you want to check out more of my content. You can also subscribe to my media feeds and channel if you want to. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Hope you guys take care, and I'll see you guys next time.